Hello and welcome to the Hammer Museum. Tonight's the third and final evening in a series of programs we're calling Beyond Baroque and Beyond, moderated by Tosh Berman. And tonight Tosh will be in dialogue with Sherry Rose to talk about the Los Angeles literary organization Beyond Baroque and the writers and artists who coalesced around it from 1980 to 1996. Our Beyond Baroque and Beyond series is part of the Hammer Museum's current biennial Made in LA. This is the fifth iteration of Made in LA, co-curated by Miriam Ben Salah, Lauren Mackler, and Ike Onyeweni. It's on exhibition now, both at the Hammer Museum and at the Huntington in Pasadena. Beyond Baroque is an independent literary art center and public space founded in 1968 uh, as an experimental literary magazine. And today they offer a diverse variety of literary and arts programming in their Venice, California headquarters. Throughout the years, Beyond Broke has played muse to the Venice Beats, the burgeoning punk movement, and innumerable writers, musicians, and scholars. Since its inception, Beyond Broke has offered writers a place to read their work and get feedback and support from other writers, and it's been instrumental in launching the careers of many artists of all kinds. As part of this year's Hammer Museum Biennial, the curators have invited writer and curator Sabrina Tarasov to participate. Her research over the past couple of years has focused on a group of writers and artists who gathered around Beyond Broke. And you can see her work in an installation on view at the Huntington from now until August 1st. The installation seeks to capture the ethos of Beyond Broke in an unconventional and experiential form that incorporates archival materials and ephemera, as well as fictionalized tableaus based on the works of Dennis Cooper, Bob Flanagan, Sherry Rose, Amy Gersler, Jack Skelly, Ed Smith, and David Trinidad. Our host for Beyond Broke and Beyond is Tosh Berman, the artistic director and curator of Beyond Broke from 1993 to 1996. Tosh is a writer and the publisher of Tam Tam Books, and in the 1980s, he hosted a public access television show called Tea with Tosh, with guests such as Philip Glass, Frank, Peter Case, Russ Tamblin, and Bruce Connor. So for the Hammer Biennial, we invited Tosh to come back as talk show host for Beyond Broke and Beyond. And tonight, Tosh will be in conversation with the one and only Sherry Rose. Their focus will be on Sherry's time at Beyond Baroque, but of course her artistic impact is much broader than the world of literature. Sherry Rose is a photographer, filmmaker, and performance artist with a master's degree from Cal State Northridge and a master's in fine arts from UC Irvine. As a photographer, she started out documenting the BDSM, body modification, and punk and queer subcultures she was part of in Los Angeles during the early 1980s. She met the poet and performance artist Bob Flanagan at Beyond Baroque, and for many years they were creative collaborators, famously and publicly exploring themes of sexuality, BDSM, death, disability, and daily living with a terminal illness. Much of this is documented in the Sundance award-winning film, Sick, The Life and Death of Bob Flanagan, Supermasochist, which Sherry Rose co-produced. Sherry and Bob also both appear in Gail Kaczynski's film, Fear of Poetry, which we screened at the Hammer Museum on June 2nd, and which you can still watch on the Hammer website for another three weeks until August 1st. There's also a wonderful video of Sherry Rose um, taken by Gail Kaczynski in last week's Beyond Baroque and Beyond program, which you can also see on the Hammer website. <clears throat> Sherry's photographs appear throughout the Sabrina Tarasov installation and also in all the Beyond Broke and Beyond programs. And Sherry and Bob's collected archives are maintained at the One National Gay and Lesbian Archives at USC. Sherry has been a real cultural innovator whose work has until recently been pretty undervalued. And she's frequently been mischaracterized as Bob Flanagan's assistant, muse, or caregiver. In truth, she has an enormous body of work in addition to her collaborations with Bob Flanagan, who died in 1996 due to cystic fibrosis. There's a new book this year about Sherry Rose called Rated Rx, edited by Yetta Howard. And it's a collection that finally establishes Sherry's long legacy and impact working in underground cultures and performance art with essays by scholars, artists, and writers. And I highly recommend checking it out. To start with, in the 1980s and 90s, Sherry was the principal photographer at Beyond Baroque, taking portraits of the writers and artists and musicians who gathered there, as well as documenting Beyond Baroque's many performance art events and readings. She collaborated with Mike Kelly on the video 100 Reasons, as well as making music videos with the bands Nine Inch Nails, Danzig, and Godflesh. Since 2011, she's collaborated with the British performance artist Martin O'Brien on performances in England, New York, and Los Angeles, including Dust to Dust at the One Institute, 
the viewing at Dada Fest in Liverpool, and the Ascension at the Jason Vass Gallery in Los Angeles. Her upcoming video installation in collaboration with Martin O'Brien is called The Last Breath Society, and it will be at the ICA in London from July 24th to August 1st. But again, for tonight, the focus is on the Beyond Broke scene in the 1980s and 1990s, where Bob Flanagan ran poetry and reading workshops, and Sherry was photographing everything, and it was a literary, poetic, punk mashup, and quite the scene. So enough from me. Let's hear from them directly. Please welcome Tosh Berman and Sherry Rose. Sherry? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> I am here, too. I am Tosh. You're Sherry. I think so. Last time I checked anyway. Because we don't we don't want the people to be confused out there watching this. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so yeah, we, we share a certain amount of history. Um, um, very intense for me, a very intense a period of time for me, as I presume for you as well. And um, you know, I I know you, of course, and I know Bob, Bob Flanagan, um, through Beyond Baroque, which is sort of a, the foundation we're talking about today. Right. And, um, you know, I don't, I know very little about your life before Bob, because when I see Bob, I think of you right away. And when I think of you, you know, you're like a, you're like a, a you're a team. We are a team. We are a team, but I, I was definitely uh, not a team before I met Bob. I was um, pretty much a housewife and mother. And after 14 years of marriage and two children, I decided there must be more to life. You know, I didn't know what exactly, mm. but I just felt, you know, I, I was married very young. I was, you know, a teenager in the fifties. So I had all that baggage to go with. Um, and my husband was very nice but I was sort of bored, I guess I would say. Hmm. Um, and then I, I dated um, many people before I met Bob. And, um, and then I met Jack Skelly, who I dated briefly. And, and Jack Skelly um, invited me to come to a Halloween party, you know? So I was pretty much a novice about poetry, about music, you hmm. know, I was just sort of um, exploring, I would say. And uh, all of a sudden, Beyond Baroque loomed large in my life, let's say. It, it did, definitely did. Did you know of Beyond Baroque before knowing Bob? Not at all. Oh. Not at all. So um, who's, who's the first person that took you to Beyond Baroque? Was it Jack Skelly? Or Jack was Skelly, it yeah. I had, met, I had met Jack Skelly at a, at a concert um, with my son, Matthew, actually. Oh. And... Um, and he told me he was a poet. And I was very intrigued by all that world, the music world, poetry world. I really knew nothing about it, but I was very eager to learn. Wow. What was your first impression when you first walked into Beyond Baroque? What did you think? Oh my goodness. Well, I loved the fact that it was this very old building in, in, in Venice. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the old, it wasn't the jail. The jail was next door, but it was Correct. the old city hall. And it, it hadn't been uh, updated since probably when it was still built. So I <laughs> liked that. I liked, it felt very homey and, and very easy to be there. It wasn't intimidating. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody was there was very, very friendly. All the whole staff was really, really friendly. And um, it was fun to be there. Absolutely. Wow. Well, look, let's look at the first slide. We have, a, we have some illustrations here. Oh, well, that... <laughs> Well, that is a, a picture, a recreation of when Bob and I met, it was Halloween mm -hmm. at, a, at a party at a wonderful woman, Alexandra Garrett, who was uh, very influential at Be uh, in Beyond Baroque in those days. And we met at her house at the Halloween party. Bob was dressed as a character from Dawn of the Dead and I was Jane Mansfield. So 10 years, <laughs> later, 10 years later, we recreated more or less <laughs> the yeah. night that we met <laughs> so this is the reproduction of the original meeting yes i i did take pictures from mm -hmm. that night uh, but there were none taken of me and bob that night really none um but it could take it was this... that point it was going to be anything more than i didn't even know bob you know it was right. i was i was um there with somebody else so who knew 
So this is your first image of Bob is him dressed as a, you know, sort of a zombie. Right. And I, and I, and I was Jane Mansfield. And I think it's <laughs> very interesting. We both were dead characters. <laughs> and, um, and of course, death always played a sort of a large part in our relationship because Bob told me that he had cystic fibrosis, which was a disease. I had never heard of that right. disease. And he told me he was looking for a good two-year relationship. Whoa, okay, okay. So, we, can take the, we can take the slide divorce, down. As a divorced woman, you know, in the, in the, in the early 80s, um, uh, or actually it was 1981 when we met, oh. it seemed like a very interesting uh, proposition. Wow. And I was willing to uh, experiment for two years. And he was very cute also. I, I would agree with you. He, <laughs> he was very, he was very cute. It's very hard for me to say was because to me he still is in my life in a oh way. Oh my goodness, he's been gone for over twenty years now. It's uh, unbelievable, isn't it? Like yesterday to me. That's sort of the cliche saying in a way. Well, doesn't seem like yesterday to me. It seems like yeah. over twenty years. Really? Wow. <laughs> but he's still very, you know, he is he is dead. But but his influence, I think, on the poetry scene in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and uh, because of the movie Sick, I mean he. He has fans all over the world. Yes. And to this very day, I get people writing me, um, emailing me, uh, messaging me, saying how much Bob and I influence them, which is lovely to think that, that yeah. that's true, you know. Yeah. I'm sure it is. When did you start first? When did you first start taking photographs? Well, I started taking photographs of my children when I was married. Mm -hmm. We would we traveled to Europe for a year and I documented that. And it was just something I wasn't trained as a photographer, but mm -hmm. I love taking images. Um, and so when I got with Bob and I thought he's going to be dead in two years and um, I want to make sure people don't forget him. So I started photographing him all the time. And he was so he was such a great subject. I mean, most of the pictures I took were were not mm -hmm. staged. They were just the things that we did around the house, which were pretty unusual at the time, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, so was there like a conscious moment where you, where you decided that you were gonna photograph him and document his life in such a manner? Yeah, well, as soon as we, we got together, and remember, I had this two year deadline in my head right. that he was gonna be dead in two years. And I knew then, that he was special. I knew right. I knew he had his talent, his humor, just his general demeanor was such a he was such a sweet person. Yeah. Weird, yes, but mm -hmm. really and generous too. And I wasn't the only one who felt that way. Yeah. So I wanted to document him as much as I could, you know, before he died, basically. He sort of reminds me of a very a really smart boy scout. <laughs> well, he liked knots. Yes, he liked to tie knots. Yes. <laughs> he was always prepared. Yes. <laughs> but like a very cheerful Boy Scout. When, when he told you he was going to die in two years, did you actually believe it like in your heart that you thought, well, I got only got two years? I mean, yeah, was it that? Absolutely. Well, I had never I had never heard of this disease, uh -huh. cystic fibrosis. And at the time, most uh, people with that disease died in childhood, but if they did live, they rarely lived beyond 30. And he was, I think, 27 when we met. Wow. So there was, there was a, 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 a sell-by date, definitely. Wow. You know. I remember being told that he was going to die, but I never really believed it for some reason. <laughs> I don't know I why. I never did either. I think I said, okay, well, let's just see what happens. <laughs> and and he's, he, he wrote songs about it. Yeah. You know, um, like the, the CF would have killed him if it weren't for S and M. Yes, that's very yeah. interesting. And I think that's true. That 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 gave him something that that was unusual, mm -hmm. um, but it it did keep him alive. His his um, his interest in S M it was way beyond just the the S and M you know sexual stuff, and I really wasn't interested in that very much actually i was much more interested in the fact that he was going to be he would clean my house 
he would take care of my children. He would do whatever I wanted. You know, I sort of, I, I liked all, and, and I was, I, one thing I really wanted to make sure was that whatever it was, I was, I was proud of this relationship. I didn't want it to be hidden. I didn't right. want it to be something we only did in the bedroom. Right. I mean, that was, of course, a part of it, but it certainly wasn't the major part of it. It was, um, I was much more interested in, in having an impact in the world and um, to show the world that women could be dominant and a, a, a man could be submissive. And that was okay. In fact, right. that was sort of fun, you know. It's very interesting, you know, the whole S&M aspect, you know, for him who suffered physically greatly, you know, in pain, it was very inspiring for me to know, to think of someone using that pain and making it and turn it into a pleasure thing or something to look forward to. And that to me is mind boggling heroic. That's to me, that's like a hero or a saint. He was, level. That, he, he was, he was, I think he was an heroic figure mm -hmm. and he was an inspirational figure. I think as well to many, many people, people who were, who had CF, like in those days, if you were, if you were somewhat disabled, yeah. um, sexuality was something was never talked about. Like, you know, oh my God, you're sick, so you can't have sex or something. So I think he, through his, his, uh, his humor, I think he really reached a lot of people to an accept. It was way before anything like, um, disability politics or anything like right. that. Um, he was sort of a pioneer in that, I think. And um, without a doubt. Yeah. And, and, and mainly we did it not to, not for political reasons. I may have, but it was mm -hmm. to have fun. That was a big part of it. Well, and as I, said, I, one uh, of his songs, it's fun to be dead, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, such a serious condition he was in and, you know, dealing with this sort of life and death issue, mostly death issues. He, both of you are, were, are so charming. That's a different aspect. The, the poison know. of the whole thing was just, a, for me, it was just an S and M thing. Yeah. It'd be like sort of the cliche goth rock, you know, <laughs> lifestyle, which is that. Is that. But your relationship added an extra texture, a, a, a substance to, to, to the whole landscape. Yeah, I, I, I think I think it was. It was, you know, but again, it was, remember the time I was coming out of a, of a marriage, I was <clears throat> very conventional and I was really interested in expanding uh, my my own interests and mm. in having and having the world be more accepting of, of people's differences. Mm -hmm. And and we just we didn't do it on like like, oh, we're gonna save the world. It was never like that. We just sort of followed our our but things that interested us and things that we thought were fun. And I think that's how we got into, into performing because it right. was things that we did privately. But again, he had this great sense of humor that he was able to make subjects that maybe other people would find, you know, disturbing or, or, and some, and some right. people did still find it difficult, but the sense of humor that we brought to it and sort of the expansiveness, I mean, we wanted to include people not exclude them right and, um we did that you know and i think you did it both you did it brilliantly i mean it was really um for me who was sort of foreign to that whole world or that lifestyle i never felt awkward in front of you or in front of bob at all you know i felt like this you know when i when i think i was a director at beyond broke for i like, remember there very well and and i worked with bob a lot because he was running the poetry workshop right right and when Bob was in the room, I felt good. Oh, that's so sweet. When Bob is not in the room, I got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to I be I want to be in Bob's presence or see him or he I just want Bob be in the same room with me. And it, I think because of his um, his sense of humor, he knew how to take something serious, not only about his own life, but about any circumstance. And he just sort of brings things to a really great reality for me. Yeah, I, I think his sense of humor was something that was um, was really special. I mean, he made fun of everything, mm -hmm. but not in a mean way, never in a yeah. mean way. But after all the poetry readings, I shouldn't be telling this story. And we Too went to every, every Friday <laughs> night for years. Yes. That's when I really began photographing in earnest. I would photograph all the poets every Friday night, uh -huh. literally years and years. 
And, and after every poetry reading, we would go out with a few friends to coffee shops usually. And Bob would sort of not make fun, but he would sort of mimic the yes. poets. And, but he did it not in a mean <laughs> way, but in a funny way. It was so funny the way he did it. And I mean, I think he humanized, there wasn't anybody he couldn't make mm -hmm. fun of and, and make more human, you know? Right. And, um, and that was a gift that he had. I think it was, um, it was, it was, it was wonderful. We, we, it was a, those years at Beyond Baroque were, were very special, very special for sure. And he was, and he, you know, the, what, for me, what separated him from other poets, not only the, 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 the uh, uh, Dennis and, and Jack and Amy and, you know, Benjamin world, but also he's like truly, I mean, he's an, he, he, he was an actor. Yes. Stand up comedian. Yes. He had like, he had like a theater, so he had like theater background, uh, which is now not that uncommon, but then it was sort of uncommon in the beyond broke world. He had stagecraft. Oh, absolutely. But also he was a member of the Groundlings, that right. comedy group. Uh -huh. And um, he ended up being in the in the Sunday show, um, which was very amazing. And um, now I lost my train of thought, <laughs> which happened. I, I, I specialize in that, so don't worry. <laughs> um, um, yeah, he he um, he became, you know, he he had a with an aura. I don't know what it was about him that mm -hmm. that whatever whatever he did, he did well and without pretense. He was the least pretentious person that I ever met. Yes. And he always made fun of himself first. That was part of it. He never never took himself seriously. And ever. that's what and that's one of the reasons why I love him at being being in the same room with him because sometimes a beyond broke is sometimes a very intense Oh my God, some of those poets were so serious. Oh my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> we could say, oh my God together. <laughs> yes, but, 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 but he, there was, there was, it was, you know, he was, he was, a, he was a special person. And um, I'm, listen, I, I'm, I miss him to this day. I, I miss him to this day. That's totally understandable. Yeah. Um, what, what's up? Let's look at the next slide. We've got some yeah, let's look at some people. slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Bill Moore was a poet uh, and a publisher, and I think it was 1982, he published the book Poetry Loves Poetry, and I had been taking pictures of the poets just sort of randomly, but he asked me to take pictures of, of all the poets who were in the book. I think there's 42 or 43 portraits that hmm. I took, and again, Bob and I went, went together. This was not professional. I didn't have professional lighting or anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> was totally environmental, what was ever there in the person's house or mm -hmm. wherever we were. And, um, and Bob usually handled the lighting for me. Sometimes it was just taking one of their, one of their lamps and just, you know, <laughs> focusing it on, on the, so the, but they were very informal, I would say. Mm -hmm. They were not formal things, but I love the photographs and I think they've held up pretty well. So Poetry Love Poetry at the time was a pretty, pretty good compilation of poets in Los Angeles at that time. Yes, correct? it was, I think, almost every poet in Los Angeles right. at that time, just about everyone. And did you did you do every poet's portrait in the book or just yes, they're all mine. Yeah. All yours. Wow. And Bob and Bob was my assistant. I think of I course think, of course having, he's your assistant. <laughs> having having Bob there, I think, made it not so formal and so serious. Right. <laughs> and I think a lot of the photographs, some of them are serious. But a lot of them have, are sort of lighthearted as well. And I tried to, uh, I, I photographed everybody most of, mostly in their houses. So whatever, whatever was going on at their desk or their living room, or whatever, that's what I photographed. It was, wasn't a formal studio right. um, at all. Can we have the next slide, please? Ah, Jack yes. Skelly. The start of it all. <laughs> tell, tell, Jack, tell, tell us. Jack, tell us. Jack and I were dating. We were dating. Wow. Uh, Cause I met him at a, at a, at a rock and roll concert and it didn't work out. We weren't, we weren't a good match. We were good match as friends, but, mm -hmm. but um, and he invited me to that Halloween party. So if Jack hadn't invited me to that party, I would not have met Bob and my whole life would have been different. So Jack, thank you for, for being as generous as you were. At and that Jack time. was the person who took you to your first time at Beyond Broke. He took me to the party at the Halloween party. Yes. Uh, so did you go to the Halloween party first before going to Beyond Broke? I mean, was that yes. 
Okay. Yes. I yes. See. So you saw all these people and, and everybody was dressed as either uh, vampires or ghosts <laughs> or zombies. I love them all. I love them all. <laughs> and I was dressed as Jane Mansfield. I yes. was a dead person too. So this I fit the, right in. This is the true portrait of Beyond Broke at that time. The yes, Holocaust I think it party. was. <laughs> Jack Skill. And Jack and Jack is a poet. A wonderful poet. Yes. And a, and a wonderful writer. I think he just wrote a new book that everyone yes. is raving about. Yes, we're all, we're, we're very excited. I haven't read it yet, but I'm very excited too. And I've been hearing nothing but great things. Yeah. Oh, great. Can we have the next slide, please? Please. Yeah. <clears throat> Amy Gersler. Yeah, Amy Gersler. Um, I photographed Amy many times. I don't think she liked my photographs of her, but I, I photographed her. I have really literally hundreds of photographs of her. I found her very beautiful and very serious. I think Amy was sort of mysterious, you know, that she didn't talk a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and you can sort of see that in the portrait, I think, of her, that sort of that intensity that she had. But she and Bob remained very good friends all the way to the end. Yes. Like Bob, Amy was, a, was another person of comfort for me at Beyond Broke. If I had a problem of some sort, I could call her mm -hmm. and she would make me feel better somehow. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah, and Bob had wonderful, especially when he was in the hospital, she would always, at the time, he would go into the hospital quite often and she yes. would always call him and they would have long conversations when um, when he was in the hospital, for sure. Did Amy knew Jack before, I mean, uh, knew Bob before um, you knew Bob or, I mean, they had- well, like I think a... everybody knew everybody. I came in, okay. you know, later. I think everybody was already at Beyond Baroque when I got in there. Right. Yeah, they were all, they were all, they were all sort of the group. Right. Sort of. Mm -hmm. And Amy is, you know, for the last, I don't know how many years, she's been published by Penguin, Penguin Books. Oh, yeah. Her poetry is amazing. Yeah. Really, quite. And it she's was even poet. back then, it was it was special. Even yeah. back then, it was wonderful. Wow, well, she's incredible. Right. Can we have the next slide, please? Yeah. Oh, my. Yes, Dennis the man, the man <laughs> of the hour, the man of the year, maybe even the man of the century, um i can't yeah. argue against that no you can't you can't he was he's i mean he's sort of like 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 bob in the yes. sense that he had this energy that draw draws people to him mm -hmm. and um super super smart i don't know anybody who's i would say is smarter than dennis cooper in terms of the the, the breadth of his knowledge and the depth of his knowledge i mean he knows so much about so many subjects it's just mind-boggling and well, he's living yeah. in paris for many many years now yeah. but but bob and dennis and i became very very good friends and we had many adventures which i will not go into now but we had many adventures together you don't want to go into it right now no i i do not maybe maybe in my memoirs <laughs> <laughs> i'm threatening to write but i haven't yet you must I read, you know, I read your memoir writing and it's pretty, it's, it's exceptionally good. You should do well, it. Well, yeah, but I, I didn't tell all the, all the nasty stories. No, not, no, I can't not wait. Not the nasty stories, but you know, it's sort of like when you, when you, if you live long enough and almost everybody is dead that you knew, you can yeah. sort of tell those stories then. So, but, but Dennis was a wonder, De, because of Dennis, before Dennis, Beyond Baroque was very lovely. It was sort of hippy dippy, mm -hmm. Venice Beach, you know, sort of laid back. Yeah. But Dennis, when Dennis took over, he just transformed the whole thing. And and he brought the New York poets into Los Angeles. Very and, important. And and brought us the the uh, the LA poets into New York. And that was like that cross pollination. Yeah was amazing it really was it it uh it brought beyond baroque's poetry i think to a whole entirely different level of of um just just the the quality of the work and the people that he brought and i became uh, he brought people like jane delin like eileen miles mm -hmm. um, just you know my brain is not going now but ma many people he brought in and um and that really it really caused um, 
like a just a whole different level of, of professionalism, you know, right. to it, which I think was wonderful. It really it, ne it needed it. L.A. was a little provincial at the time. Dennis has a strong vision thing. He has a strong vision talent. Some people don't have that vision thing. Sometimes they're just really good writers or good poets. But Dennis could look at the landscape and, and, and has an understanding of its importance, what's in front of him. And he knows how to project that importance to other people. Yeah. Well, Dennis was the one, if, if we ever wanted to know what was hip or what was cool, mm -hmm. we just asked Dennis. And he always knew ahead of the times what was really cool. You could never go wrong with Dennis's taste in anything. It was no. He was a he was a remarkable uh, curator at Beyond Broke. But not only that, you know, to this day, you know, he has this incredible blog, which I know. I read it. I I try to read it every day. It, it's overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. The the detail of the things, <laughs> and it's not just one subject. It's no. like so many. I mean, he's like, what do they call that? A Renaissance man. Well, no, every Vic subject. Yes, every subject he brings up, it's like in depth. It's not like this sort of lightly done. Absolutely, absolutely. And he does this like Monday through Saturday. Sunday, I know, he takes, I know, takes a day off. I know. And he was a lot of fun to photograph. I photographed him so much over the years. I just, wow. he was just a, and I, and several, I don't think you have a, a photograph of the, the book covers that I did of his. I've done oh. several, several book covers early, early on. You know? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm when I'm, I'm planning to do a Dennis segment, so we'll have those covers on on the show. We'll, we'll yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 a photograph that I took of him back in the '80s is on the cover of his book Wrong. Oh, you know, uh huh. The book about him and his yes. poetry. So I'm very very proud of of, of my associate, and I still we still talk occasionally. I'm not. A, that good of a communicator as he is, but we do. When he came to LA a couple of years ago, um, we met and it was just, you know, wonderful to see him as always. I, I saw him in Paris. Oh, lucky you. And it was almost like seeing Orson Welles in the third man. Uh, right. Well, I would say, you know, except Dennis is still very cute and not, not fat. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not fat, but he, and he is cute. He's very cute. <laughs> Can we have the next picture, please? Next slide. Ah, David Trinidad. David Trinidad. Yeah, da David um, David and Bob became very, very close. And again, we had, at the time, I had this big house in Westwood, mm -hmm. every, uh, a relic from my divorce, and everybody else sort of didn't, you know? So we had a lot of parties at my house. A lot of people stayed at my house. We were sort of like the halfway house for poets. Wow. <laughs> that if people needed to stay somewhere, they would come to our house and stay with us. And 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 David and Bob became very very good friends. And um and actually, Dave, through David Trinidad, I got my job at the Housing Authority. Um, because David at the time was working at the Housing Authority. Um, and I needed a job. So he said, well, come work with the housing authority. So thanks to David, I, I, I got my job, which I kept on for the next eight years. Wow. And, and, uh, and David and Bob wrote, um, now see, this is my, the, uh, the, 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 the collaboration, mm -hmm. which you don't have a picture of you. I think you have a picture. We do. Of that. We do. We'll, we'll, when we get to that, we'll talk about that. All right. All right. Yeah. So let's, yeah. go, let's go to the next slide. If yeah. it's, Ah, Ed Smith. Ed Smith was my, I don't know, Ed Smith, you couldn't not love Ed Smith. And in fact, the first night I met Ed Smith, uh, Dennis Cooper said to me, you've got to meet Ed Smith. He's a wonderful, he's this, he's that, you know. And so Ed Smith had met uh, Dennis, I think it's some, uh, probably a, a concert, hmm. probably a punk concert because um, Ed was a very big fan of Darby Crash and the mm -hmm. Germs. And um, I think that's when they might have met. And uh, so it was through it was through Dennis again, who mm. brought Ed Smith into our world. Mm. And um, he was very funny, a great sense of humor, unpretentious. Um, he could make you crazy, but in a good way. We every I mean, you could not you could not help but love Ed Smith. 
I, I feel very sad that he's gone. Uh, he's someone I miss very, very much. I used, I used to have these long, long telephone conversations with him when he was in New York. Oh. Uh, maybe in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. And um, well, we had don't, this. Well, we had similar besides being writers and stuff. But uh, you know, I was I, I am married to a Japanese woman. Exactly. And he was married to a Japanese. I know, I know very woman. well. Yes. I know. Well, here's something. Another story about Ed Smith. <clears throat> when when Bob died, um, I think it was just months after Bob died, um, his wife, who was an artist, Mia Shirai, um, she was involved in this art show in Japan. And, uh, and Ed invited me and she invited me to be part of this international art show. And in the show, I made a, uh, a 20 foot vinyl balloon of Bob in a straight jacket with a four foot erect penis. <laughs> <laughs> and that showed in Japan for uh, 10 days of the art show. Great. And uh, I'll never forget that. It was, a, it was an amazing tribute to Bob and it wouldn't have happened without Ed Smith being married to, to his wife and they invited me to, to come to Japan. It was like an amazing tribute to Bob, like an homage to Bob. Right, great. This is a great portrait of Ed. You know, I didn't, I told this now, the, the shadow figure. Yes. You know, the, the shadow is beautiful. It's like almost like a Jean Cocteau portrait of, of one, of the, yeah. one of those guys. Yeah, it is. You, I eye, you can see the eyelashes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I was more motivated, I think, with some of the portraits. You know, there was 43 of them, and some of them were wonderful, and some of them were not. But Ed was definitely, I photographed him several, many times as well. And David Trinidad edited this beautiful volume of Ed's work and poetry yeah. not that long ago, maybe last year or the last year before. Last year, I think that. it was, yeah. Wonderful book. Great book. Um, let's go. I can't remember what the next slide is. Can you go to the next slide? Ah, okay. I did a series of like Bob's books in order. Right. Well, this this is this is the book that made me. Um, I wouldn't say fall in love with Bob, but mm -hmm. here I am at at, at Alexandra Alexandra Garrett's house for Halloween, the first the first night, and there are all these poets there, and and I knew Jack, of course, and and I talked to Bob. We're both dead people, and 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 I said, well, you're a poet. He says, yeah, and I and I have a book. I said, really? So I was very impressed that he had it was actually a published poet and he and he went into her bookcase and and drew out the book and i just fell i think i fell in love with him right there just the cover it's him and his brother and just the whole it was a very small book um but i think that really did it for me that is, he, is he the one on the left or on the right i can't see i'm not uh -oh. sure yeah but they're both wearing like both one's wearing they both like, look like, like twins the brother yeah. was uh tim um, was I think a, about a, a year or two younger, I think. Oh, okay, so there, I think maybe it's- Bob's on, Bob's on the yeah. right, my right. Snappy yeah. dresser. Very, very <laughs> much. You know, speaking of Alexandria, I when I became director at Beyond Brook, I went to her house a couple of times. And one thing impressed me, she was a very interesting person. And yeah, I got yeah. the feeling that I'm seeing like, not only a Beyond Brook person, but a Los Angeles cultural, culture person very much so and she's showing me like her photo album of you know like parties and you know like oh yes and I, I noticed one person in the background i said oh my god that's peter laurie <laughs> really <laughs> yeah peter laurie from am and you know the monster films and uh, i know i know who he is yes and i thought and i kept looking oh, yeah, this is peter laurie and she said yeah whatever you know <laughs> <laughs> i keep and every five minutes i go alexandra that's that's peter <laughs> laurie in your house yeah, well, she had a beautiful house in in the in the Santa Monica Canyon. Yeah, and again, like like what I would do later on, she was really generous because she also was one of the few people who had a lovely house. Right. So she had many many parties there. Her death was so unexpected. It just one night she went to bed and she didn't wake up. And I think it happened when I was director at Beyond Broke. Yeah, it was it was shocking yeah. and 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 no no preparation. Right, right, but. So th th these poems in Bob's book, The Kid is the Man, are, th are these poems written before he met you or? Oh yes, oh yeah. yeah. It, was already, it was already published by the time I met him, yeah. And it was published by Jack, it's called Jack Bob Grapes. Press. Jack Grapes, Jack Grapes was a wonderful 
poetry teacher. He was, huh. he taught me as well. And, and again, Bob and him were very, very good friends as well. Wow, interesting, great. Can we have the next slide, please? Okay. <clears throat> the writing of everything. Yes. Uh, I don't know if this was our first collaborative po a cover. I'm not, I don't remember what year it was, mm -hmm. but um, it was, it was again, I think, I think it was Bob's idea, I would say. Um, and it's like, I think there's three different um, photographs, montage, the mm -hmm. clouds were one, his hand was the other, and, and the, the wedding bouquet, the third. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was a wonderful book. And it was, I love Bob and I made several small books together from, and usually small press, Amy Colcom Press and Sherwood Press. So what we were doing then, the poets were making their own little books, you know, right. and they were, it was, a, it was a magical time. Really, it was. Who, who is Sherwood money, Press? And we just, we just, we did it out of the love of poetry, you right. know, it was, it was very pure, I would say. There do, you, was, do you know who Sherwood Press is or who, who is Sherwood? Yeah, that Press? was, I think that was. David Trinidad's very good friend who died in a car oh. crash. Oh, okay. So he named the press after her. Oh, I see. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Great. Um, next, uh, next slide, please. Well, this Slay is. On it. Yes, this is this is our probably most famous uh, book. I hear it's it sells for like six hundred dollars if you can get one. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think I all find. these books are very rare now. I this mean, this is very rare. You know. Well, again, we were. Again, you know, thinking back now, the most amazing, our friends were all so creative. Mm -hmm. And and nobody was, I don't think, that famous then, no. if that's the yeah. word to use. We were just all friends having good times. Mike yeah. was probably the most famous of anybody. But um, but um, I, I had, um, um, as, as Bob's mistress, I would like to give him uh, things to do that were not necessarily sexual, but mm -hmm. literary. So, um, so one of the things we did was uh, the slave sonnets, which um, he wrote as per Ted Berrigan, who was a wonderful New York poet who wrote yes. sonnets. So Bob wrote 10 poems all about me, um, mm -hmm. devoting himself to me as my slave. And then we asked Mike Kelly to make um, an a art piece for it. And this is the, the piece that, that Mike Kelly made for the, that book. Magnificent it's package. It's beautiful. Some people, some people, one person I know has that tattooed on her chest. Really? I, yeah. I have, I don't, I don't really, ha I have a, I really don't have tattoos, but if I did, that's the one I'd have. <laughs> and the Good. knife, by the way, is a ritual knife that I use in many of my performances, uh -huh. with Bob, and then now with my partner, um, uh, Martin O'Brien, who mm. also has CF, who's from London. I've been collaborating with Martin, who's a gay man, but I do many of the same uh, performances with Martin that I did with Bob. Wow. Uh, and I use that knife uh, uh -huh. often, so it's immortal. Wow. And he has CF as well. He has CF as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And we've been collaborating. I, I, he comes to LA and I go to London and I'm collaborating with him now in a piece that he's doing in London uh, all about zombies. So I did a video that will be shown in London this year. Great. Wow. Okay. Let's have the, let's have the next slide, please. Yeah. And oh, that's, that's the infamous one that was printed in, um, in, in, in uh, India with Hanuman Press um, and was confiscated at the cover, was confiscated at the border because it was like a religious little book. They're very small. There's a whole series of them. I have one here. I don't have, I don't have Puck Journal, unfortunately, but I have, I have this, the Richard Hell book. Oh yeah. They're well, all the same about, size. Yeah, they're all the same size and, and, and when the when the when the uh, customs people saw the cover, they said, "No, no, no, can't do it, can't do it." Right. So they had to smuggle some of them in. Uh -huh. So they did, and there are a few av available. And that's really what Bob looked like. I I don't remember what year this was. Maybe I'm gonna think eighty two, maybe. 82. Right. I forget what year, but you can see how young and adorable he was. 
Well, is Fuck Journal uh, literally a, a journal of, of uh, sexual? Yes, it's, I told him again, I would give him assignments uh -huh. um, that every time that we had intercourse, not any S&M activity, but just pure intercourse, mm -hmm. he had to write it up. So wow. it's not very long, it's not very detailed, but um, for a whole year. Bob was a good employee of yours. Yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> did, did he ever get a raise or? Uh, no, I, I never really let him off of his leash very much. <laughs> no, it's probably, I, I it's probably better him, that way. I kept him close to hand, yes. So can, do you know, this may be an unfair question to ask you because you may not know this, but is do you know anything about the press? Do you know, like, because this is a very interesting press. Hanuman Press? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm 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 blocking on the name of the artist from India. Oh uh, yeah, it's Francesco Clemente. Francesco Clemente, who lived half his life uh, in Italy and half in and half in in uh, and half in India. And, and Raymond it, uh -huh. Foy, yes, who was a, a wonderful. Uh, I'm not sure if Raymond was a poet, but a wonderful person. He was sort of his liaison. Yeah. And I don't know who came up with the idea to to make this whole series. But um, um, there, it was a wonderful. It was a wonderful. And they were really beautiful. It's very interesting because it's the you know the, the, as a series it focused on like sort of like punk New York punk rock era people like Richard Hale, Patti Smith, right. Uh, then like sort of the Beats with Allen Ginsberg right. and Girls, I believe, and uh, uh, others, and then and then people like the Surrealists, you know, the French right. Surrealists and of that era, and the LA and then, Poets, <laughs> and the Los Angeles Poets. Right, right. Very happy to be, and I did about I did about three or four of the covers. I think I did Amy's, and I think I did David's. I can't remember. Maybe did you something. do this cover? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll yeah. make that clear. Very clear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to make sure you get the proper credit. Oh well, listen, credit. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have the next slide, please? Ah, this is okay. Tell tell us about uh, a taste of honey, which is. Credit to Bob and David Trinidad. Yeah, well, what they what they would do, what I think it was almost every day, one person would write a line and then send it to the other person, and mm -hmm. the other person would respond to that line and 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 then give it back. So each line in the in the in the book is one line is David's and one line is Bob's. And you real and right now, sometimes there's little clues as to whose is whose, but not always. And right. then uh, Jim Shaw, another another wonderful artist, friend of ours, yes. Yes. took two photographs, one of David and one of Bob, and he had this way of, of mixing them together so that you, each one square is Bob and one square is David. And I think the, 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 uh, the combination, you really can't tell, is it Bob? Is it David? It's like an amalgamum of both of them. Yeah, when I look at it, and I think of Bob, I see Bob. Yeah. And if I turn my head away and I think of David, yeah. I, think of the cover, I see David. Yeah. It's so really I a brilliant another, cover. Another, I think what was wonderful about that whole period of time was the was the collaboration of artists and poets and musicians. We just it was all it all sort of blurred together in just just a wonderful way. And because nobody then at that point, or at least talking about the early 80s, mm -hmm. no one was really that famous. I mean, we didn't worry about getting paid for things. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we did so many of the things because we just had fun doing them, you know. And it seems like almost everybody involved with Beyond Broke that time had their own publication of some sort. Yeah, many their of them. Their own journal or magazine, everybody. Yes, yes every, everybody did. And um, and the core group was, I mean, I think, I think Dennis wrote a poem called Our Group, yes. you know, where, which I, I don't remember where that poem is. But it, but it was we we did have it, it was this sort of and I think that at that at the Huntington I think that that comes across I think in that show where we did have this sort of but it was very loose it wasn't you have to we didn't initiate anybody into the club or you had to right. do anything it was very loose very very loose yeah um, and yeah. Uh, Sabrina is the one who curated the 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 Sabrina, show. Sabrina Tarasov is just amazing. She knows more about that group than I do. I think she's really researched and amazing. Yeah. And so, and so I haven't. We haven't been to the exhibit yet. No, I have not. But have people not who have gone. Yes. 
uh, sort of rave about it. Yes, they do. It's sort of like a fun house or a haunted house. Haunted house. The haunted house. And maybe because so many of the people involved, not so many, but many of the people involved are are dead. So it is like resurrecting them in a way that is very beautiful to a whole new generation. Uh, When things weren't, you know, uh, formalized, people weren't worried about, you know, getting on social media. This is all before social media. You yes. realize. Everything that we did was very hands-on. Well, and know. it's all through publications, you know, all these like journals that came out and stuff. Everything. It was all, you know, and it was very, I would say it was very inclusive. It wasn't like snobby, like, oh, well, you can't be part of this. No, it was, if you wanted to be a part of that group and you had talent or we thought you had talent, or someone like me who wasn't a poet but just documented the whole thing, you know, it was it was you know it was wonderful. I I played a very important part in that whole scene. What I did was um, when I went to Beyond Broke, I paid money to get in. Yes. And I bought the journals. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel very much. I feel very much of an important essence of the whole scene. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you know, again, like, I think when you get old, um, I'm going to be 80, God forbid, I'm going to be 80 years old in September. 80. 80, can't believe it. That's a little bit older than 79. That's not so old. Uh, It's pretty old. old. (laughs) But you do get nostalgic about the past. You do. I mean, that's just, I think that's normal. Do you have a next slide, please? Ah, uh, the pain journal. This okay. This is a a book that came out after he passed away. I, I think just around, Sin- around that Sin- time, yeah. And um, what Bob again? Bob was a, a an inveterate journalist. He mm-hmm. he journaled before I met him. He was journaling every like every ten minutes. He would uh, write in his journals. In fact, all those journals are at Ohio State um, University in their mm-hmm. archives. Right. I donated all of Bob's papers to the to their archives. Um, we had some really good friends in Ohio. And so he has like, I don't know, hundreds, I want to say, of journals. Right. So the last year of his life, he kept a journal as well. Did you edit this journal? journal no, or did, it was not did edited at all. Oh. A lot of people said, oh, you shouldn't have that in there. And mm-hmm. I look terrible because I was depressed or whatever. But mm-hmm. I thought, no. No, I'm not, I'm not going to edit. This is Bob. This is the right. reality of what he was feeling. Um, and so it's unedited. Completely. It's a remarkable book. I, I mean, I read it once. I have it somewhere in the house. And it's this, it's, yeah, it's an amazing book. I mean, it really captures, for me, it captures the time, the essence of who he is and what he did. It was a, it's, a, it's, an, it's an incredible document. Yeah, I think so. I, and I, I think can't. Mm-hmm. I can't read it, by the way. It, okay, it, it, understand. It's it too sad for me to read, yeah. but I, I, I have it. <laughs> um, and uh, well, let's go to the next slide. Ah, Bob well, at work. <laughs> that's another. We didn't even talk about that aspect of Bob. Mm-hmm. Um, he and Jack Skelly and Rick Londell started a punk rock group called Planet of Toys. Ah. And this is from uh, one of their performances. Bob was a lead singer and guitar player and Rick Londale played the bongos and Jack mm-hmm. Skelly played lead guitar. <laughs> and they were so funny. They were yeah. so, uh, you know, I know, you, I know you're a huge Sparks fan and I'm you not gonna mean. say they were as profound as Sparks, they mm-hmm. weren't. But, but what they did at the time was pretty funny. They had that great, weird sense of humor about life, you know. Have they made any recordings? Are there, are there well, any? You no, know, I've talked to Jack about this a hundred times over the years. They mm-hmm. made one professional uh, tape recording, one mm-hmm. session, mm-hmm. but they never made a record. It's legendary, this recording. Like it's only five people have heard it. It's worth. 12, $12.3 million. And I don't know. I would, I, you know, Jack, if you're listening, please send me a copy. It's, it's, a, it's on a tape. That's all it is. It was never made into a record. Or just keep it on a legendary basis. Maybe nobody should hear it. Just well, keep I want to hear it. You know, their original, <clears throat> their original shows were in the living room of my house on Thurston oh. Avenue. 
And one of their very first shows was for my son's 13th birthday. Well, <laughs> of all the people you room. Of all the people, you definitely deserve to hear it. I think so. I, I think even so. get a copy if I may even say so. I think so. <laughs> What's the next slide? Ah, this is a portrait. That's um, yeah, that is Bob, isn't it? Yes. He looks, he looks. I don't know when that was taken. I'm not sure, but he looks sort of sad, older. I'm not even sure. He as the as the last year of his life, he he looked gaunt. He he looked old. He he aged. He was only 43 when he died, mm -hmm. but um, he it, it took its toll on him. It did. I remember going to parties at your house. Not a lot of parties. Maybe like two or three event parties at your house. And um, I remember they're great, one. But two, there was a, a young girl. Maybe she was 17 years old. She was there with her parents. And she also has CF. Do you remember this at all? Yeah, it must have been Sarah. Is that who? It, okay, I don't remember her name. When Sarah, she, she had CF. She, yeah, we met Sarah. We met Sarah because she, when she was like 17 and the, the there was a, there was a group called um, Make a Wish Foundation. Yes. yes. And her wish, because she had read uh, the, you don't have a picture of it, I don't think, but the, uh, the Modern Primitives book, which yes. was very um, influential. And uh, she, and she wanted to meet Bob. That was her, that was her Make a Wish desire. Right. So they flew her out from Canada with her mother. Yes. Who was 17 years old. And um, unfortunately, her mother was very sweet. I remember that. Very lovely. May yeah. was her mother. Unfortunately, Sarah passed away maybe uh, three or four years ago. She lived to at least 40, but wow. she had, a, lung, she had a, a double lung transplant. Jeez. And, uh, but she was wonderful. And she, she adored Bob, and Bob adored her as well. They were very play. She was very playful. I think you know, you, had, you had a. If I'm remembering correctly, I had sometimes have romantic memories. I mean, yeah, I, I know. Me too. <laughs> but I, I have a faint memory. There was a cage in your place. Oh, that was a birthday present for Bob. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I bought. I bought. Yes, there was. I. I had. Well, you know. Um, Bob. Bob enjoyed uh, bondage, and he and he and he and he enjoyed being in confined spaces. And um, there were, I met these two men, uh, they lived somewhere in the South and that was, they, they built rep, they were into S&M mm -hmm. and they built replicas of uh, tiger cages. Oh. So it was uh, solid steel, mm -hmm. weighed hundreds of pounds and they shipped it all the way from uh, Alabama or whatever it was in the South. And it was a birthday present for Bob that he occasionally got to sleep in. Uh -huh. so, and now that, or... <laughs> that that cage is now at a in a professional S and M dungeon in Los Angeles, and I sometimes go there just to see it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should try and sell it. I don't know, but it, it's it's being used professionally, not by me. But but I actually, it's not true. I when Martin came to L A, we did a twenty four hour performance in that dungeon and Martin was in that cage oh. for 24 hours. So, wow. so it has, it has been used. So it has a history. It has a it history. Has a great history. <laughs> it has a great history. I think our time is running out, but I thought. All right. To... Well, Tosh, this was wonderful. Down, down, down memory lane. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> this is your book or book about you and oh. some of your writing. Oh, and my writing and book, but... pictures. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of, and Yetta Howard, a wonderful woman, was uh, the editor. And um, it's and a lot of academic writing, um, a lot of photographs that probably my grandchildren will not like to see, but, oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's called uh, Rated RX, Sherry Rose with and after Bob Flanagan, pretty much right. covers your life yeah. and the interview with you is wonderful but i was really really impressed with your writing in this book thank you and i want to see a longer memoir of some yeah, sort well, i'm 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 going to mexico for a month um and i hope to write my memoir i'm not really i'm not really disciplined as a writer but mm -hmm. i really feel that it's time to write my side of the story writing is very easy all you do is sit 
behind a computer screen <laughs> and you stare at it. Uh -huh. <laughs> you don't move. You stare for like eight hours, and then after uh -huh. eight hours, you can take a bath. And maybe you'll break. get two sentences out of it. <laughs> well, that be let's, maybe a sentence or three words together. It'd be fine. I'll be Mexico for a month. We'll see how far I get. And here's made in LA, 2020, the show that the Beyond Broke Sabrina, whoops, part is in. Oh, I haven't seen it. I yeah, Sabrina's in here. Yeah. Uh, and she wrote a beautiful essay about her exhibit and this Beyond Broke. Wonderful. Oh, good. I I should see that or get a copy of it. You should get a copy. Yeah. As well as the you know the music that you waiting yes. for. Yes. All right. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen. We must go. Um, Thank I you just, so much, Tosh. It was wonderful talking to you. I, am, I really enjoyed it. Really, I enjoyed love you, Sherry. Well. Love you too, sweetheart. Um, maybe we'll share a cage one day. We'll. Uh, who knows? Have any promises? <laughs> who knows? All right. Take care, everybody. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.